Well, good morning boys and girls and welcome to Sunday School again this morning and today we're going to have a wee look at how God's Word is perfect. God's Word of course is the Bible so if you have a Bible it would be nice if you could have it in front of you there and you can look up a couple of verses with me as we go through. So I don't know if any of you have ever read the Bible right from the very start to the very big, very end. Well, I have never done that myself. I've read my Bible many times, but I've never started at the beginning and read it right through to the very end. I know a lot of people have, and it would take quite a while to do, but it would be a very worthwhile exercise for all of us. Well, I want you to look at this with me today because many people don't realize that the Bible is the only book that is a complete history of mankind, right from the very beginning to the present day. There's no other book that can take you right through the entire course of history from the beginning till now. Many books can tell you about something that happened during the war or in other different periods of our mankind's existence, but no other book will take you right from the beginning to the very end. And it is so important it is the most important book that you will ever read. It's the only book that can lead you to salvation and to heaven and to home. So, you know that many of you probably live in a new bungalow. Maybe your mummy and daddy built a new house. Maybe they didn't, but maybe they built a new house. And the first thing that's done when the digger comes to build that house is he digs out the foundation. He has to make a solid sure foundation so that the house won't fall down. Now, the Bible gives us direction in our lives how to find that solid foundation. And that solid foundation of, for us through the word of God leads us to Jesus Christ, who is the rock and our solid foundation. If you could turn in your Bible to Psalm 19, and we're just gonna look at five verses there quickly and that's that's us finished so if you could just listen for a few minutes that'll be it all done and it's so important boys and girls so Psalm 19 starting to read at verse 7 through to the end of verse 11 the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple the statutes of the Lord are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, there is great reward. So those simple little verses, we're just going to quickly go through them there and just look at the main points. Now, there are eight different words or phrases in those verses that describe God's word and they tell us what it's like. So we're going to look through and find them. The words that we're looking for are perfect, sure, right, pure, true, righteous, more to be desired than gold, and sweeter also than honey. It's an amazing thing, you know, God's word, God's word, and something this wonderful can surely change those who read it, change their lives forever. Now, verse seven says, the law of the Lord is perfect. And what does the perfect law convert? It converts the soul. Now, what does that mean to have your soul converted? Well, it means that God will completely change our desires through his word. He will completely change what we feel that we want to do. And we no longer want the things that we used to want. Because when we read God's word and we discover these different pointers that he gives us and directions, we realize the joy that we can have by coming to Jesus as our savior and by living our lives according to God's holy word. We want to honor God. We want to do God's will and the law of the Lord will change our hearts forever. Now, second part of Psalm 19 and verse seven 
says the testimony of the Lord is sure. What does that mean? That it, that it, what does it mean that the sure testimony of God will make us? Well, it'll make us wise. What does that mean? Well, maybe sometimes people are joking and they'll say, oh, you're not wise. <laughs> you haven't got much sense. Well, that's in a joking way, but the Bible doesn't mean it like that. When the Bible asks us to be wise, it says the testimony of the Lord brings us wisdom. And testimony is another word for God's word. And we must go to God's word for wisdom to become wise because we really aren't very wise on our own by ourselves. We need help. And that help comes from God's word. And it helps us to make the right choices. It helps us to become wise. Okay. So first part of 19, Psalm 19 and verse 8 tells us about the pure commandment of the Lord. It says the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Now if your eyes are enlightened, what does that mean? What does, he, what does the word of God mean when it talks about enlightening your eyes? Well, it means that the Bible helps us to understand. Through the Holy Spirit, God will help us to understand what he is trying to say to us through his holy word, the Bible. Now, of course, there are many other ways that the Holy Spirit can speak to us when we're saved, but the Bible is our rock. It's our foundation. It's the thing that we must turn to, the book that we must turn to, and it's the book that God uses to direct us, even us adults as well, not just children. Psalm 19 and verse 9. Second half of that verse says something about the judgments of the Lord. What are they? It says that they're true and righteous. Now God's judgments, the Bible, are true and righteous. They can be trusted. Okay, you can trust God's judgments and they are to be desired. Now, if you think of someone who's done something really wrong, really bad, and they go to court and they're judged for that, they don't want to be judged. They want to escape in many cases and get away and do it again, do whatever they've done wrong again. But the Bible tells us that God's laws can be trusted they are true and righteous, and they are to be desired. So God's judgments are something, the judgment of God is something that we want to avoid in the end. We don't want to be judged, but through the Lord Jesus Christ shedding his blood, we have a way to avoid that final judgment of God to damnation, to hell. We have a way to avoid that by asking Jesus come into our lives to just forgive us for our sins and to live our lives according to his will from that day forward and we find his will in the bible don't we we the bible guides us and directs us it says that god's word is worth more than gold and it's sweeter than honey it's worth learning about 19 and verse 11 tells us two things about God's word. We are warned by them and there is reward in keeping them. So through God's word, he warns us what we must not do, what we must avoid, but he also tells us that there is great reward for us in heaven by keeping his holy word. Now, every word of God is special and God's word is meant to change us in many ways and it will change us if we read it and believe it and love it and try to live our lives according to what it tells us now one other little verse there i want you to look up it's in proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5 just one verse proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5 and it says this every word of god is pure he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him Every word of God is pure. It is a shield to them that put their trust in him. Every word. That means no matter where, if you open your Bible and point your finger, whatever you read, you know, is com the complete truth. It is complete truth. 
There's no wavering from that. Every word of God in your Bible here is true. Everything that the Bible tells us has happened, has happened. Everything that it tells us is happening now is happening. And everything that it tells us is going to happen in the future will happen in the future. It also tells us that God loves you, that God will forgive you of your sins if you turn to him in sincere repentance. And it tells you that he will send his Holy Spirit to dwell within you and to guide you and direct you. And that word of God in the Bible is there to help you along the way in your life. You can turn to it at any time and it will direct you, it will guide you, it will help to keep you from falling and it will always be there for you. It is so important. Now, these are the words that we've read there from one true God and you think that he would be best, the best one to go to when you make choices in your life. Of course he would. Turn to Jesus when you have important choices to make. Pray to God to guide you, to help you to make the right choices. And it also tells us that God is a shield. Now, he's a shield to those who trust in him. He will protect us and he will guard us against attack. And that attack will come from the devil. And even if you're saved, it doesn't mean that the devil won't attack you. He will attack you and probably even more when you're saved because he wants you to fall. He wants you to fall and with that, probably to pull other Christians down with you who will maybe quickly follow your example. So God's word is our shield. Now it doesn't mean that you're going to not come up against problems in your life, that you're not going to have difficulties. Of course you are, because this life is riddled with sin and with problems. But one day there will be no more sin there will be no more death. There will be no more problems in your life. No more worries. Just living with God in heaven. If you come to know him as your own and personal saviour and turn to him for forgiveness of your sins. So I pray that you will realise this day that God's word is true. That everything that you read in that book Everything that you read is the truth. And the next time you read a verse, you think on it and you think, I can lift a book out of my bookcase at home and read it. And it's just for pleasure and joy. And I don't know what it is, maybe football, maybe a comic, maybe another book about fiction or something else. It doesn't matter. You can read it and it'll give you short-term joy. The Bible can give you joy for life forever. So remember, God's word is true and God loves you and God wants you to read it, to take it in and to follow the example that he gives you in the Bible. And then one day it will lead you to salvation and one day you can come to live with him in heaven and home. So thank you so much for listening. I'm just gonna finish with a wee prayer Okay, so close your eyes one wee second, please. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for this little word today. But we thank you most of all for the Bible. We thank you that you have given it to us to guide us, to help us, to direct us, to instruct us, and to just to be there as our go-to book, the thing that we can turn to at any time, and to help us, Lord, even to memorize verses from the Bible so that when the devil attacks and attacks these young children's lives, that they can remember your holy word and that you can speak to them through it and help to protect them and guard them against the wiles of the devil. Protect all of their families today. And we pray that this virus won't touch any of our lives, that you'll keep us all safe, Father, all of our mummies, daddies, grannies, grandas, aunts, all of our brothers and sisters, protect us all, dear Lord. And we pray that soon we can meet together again in, in fellowship in our church building. But in the meantime, Lord, we know that you will continue to be with us and you'll bless us and help us and bring us again safely in your will 
to Sunday school again next week. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.